Welcome, 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 everybody. How you doing? Hope everybody's safe and doing okay. Um, tonight, we're going to do lecture number 49, chemistry part seven. I'm going to talk about moles for the masses. Okay, this is going to be a short lecture. I really just want to emphasize what a big number a mole is. Okay, and then in the following lectures, we'll, we'll use it in a chemistry sense. Okie doke. So let's go. One dozen. If we have a dozen of anything, we have 12 of anything. So if I have a dozen erasers, 12 erasers. If I have a dozen pens, 12 pens. Do dozen pots, 12 pots. A dozen tables, 12 p <gasps> A dozen chairs, 12 chairs. Okay, we get it. A dozen is a 12. Simple. You understand that? Piece of cake. What if I have a baker's dozen? Okay. Well, a baker's dozen is traditionally, if you buy a dozen bagels, the baker gives you an extra one. So a, do a baker's dozen of anything is 13. So if I have a dozen, a baker's dozen of bagels, I have 13 bagels. A baker's dozen of donuts, I have 13 donuts. A baker's dozen of bananas, I have 13 bananas. Okay, so a baker's dozen is 13. A dozen itself is 12. We get it. What about a gross? A gross is a dozen dozen, usually used in uh, retail. So a dozen dozen is 144. So if I have a gross of pencils, I have 144 pencils. A gross of pens, 144 pens. A gross of erasers, 144 erasers. Okay, so women, you know, you could use this as a code. If you're at a bar and you're looking at somebody and you say, he's so 144. See, that just means he's gross. See, that's a good code. All right, forget that crap. So dozen, baker's dozen, gross, they're all just numbers. Now we're going to talk about a mole. A mole is just going to be a number, but it's a very big number, and that's what I want to tell you about today, because most people don't realize what an absolutely humongous, amazingly big, incomprehensibly big number a mole is, okay? We use it, chemists use it, we use it all the time, but we really don't have a sense of it because it's so amazingly big. All right, so a mole of anything is 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. For our class, we're just going to use 6, but I'll say 6.02 for now, times 10 to the 23rd power. Remember, that's 23 zeros. Capital N, capital A, capital N, capital A is called Avogadro's number. Okay, Mrs. Avogadro said to her husband, Avogadro, I got your number. Okay, so Avogadro's number is one mole. So if I have Avogadro's number of pens, I have 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd pens. Good? So if I have Avogadro's number of tables, I have 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd tables. If I have Avogadro's number of hydrogen atoms, I have 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd hydrogen atoms. If I have Avogadro's number of carbon atoms, I have 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. You'll see why I'm saying this in the, the next lecture. Okay, so Avogadro's number or one mole is 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. So I have one mole of bananas. How many bananas I have? That's a lot of bananas. 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. Or for us, just 6 times 10 to the 23rd. Okay, so 10 to the 23rd is such a big number, I got to tell you, okay? So let's look. All right, so Na is a very, very big number. Avogadro's number is a very big number. One mole of anything is a very, very, very big number, okay? So keep that in mind. So how big? So let's talk about grains of sand on a beach. Suppose you go to the beach. If you're in New York, you're in Brooklyn, you go to Manhattan Beach, Orchard Beach, wherever beach you go, and you look at all that sand on the beach, it's a lot of grains of sand, okay? You could count the number of grains of sand in your hand and then add it all up to maybe figure out how much sand is on in that whole beach. So let's say you're at Coney Island, Coney Island Beach, think of all those grains of sand on the beach. Now imagine all the grains of sand on all the beaches on the earth. So in South Africa, in South America, Central America, in Asia, all the beaches in the United States, all the beaches on every beach in the world, add up every grain of sand. That's still not as big as Avogadro's number, 10 to the 23rd. You still have less than 10 to the 23rd grains of sand in all the grains of sand in the world. That's a lot. That's a 
big lot of grains of sand, still less than Avogadro's number. Let's look at popcorn kernels. So suppose you buy popcorn, right? You don't buy pre-made. You buy the little kernels in a jar, and then you're going to pop them. Suppose you took those little kernels. If you took those little kernels, it could cover the entire continental 48 states, the entire United States. Okay? And if you cover the entire United States, continental United States, with uh, unpopped kernels of corn, okay, that's a lot. And if you go nine miles deep, nine miles deep, nine miles deep and cover the entire United States, that's Avogadro's number. Wow. So that is is one mole of unpopped corn. OK, let's look at the number of stars in the universe. Why not? We're having fun. So why not? OK, the Milky Way galaxy where we live. Now, if you're from a country where you can actually see the scar sky, you can see sometimes a haze. That's called the Milky Way. When you look out. Uh, on a clear night, if you can see the Milky Way, our galaxy, the Milky Way galaxy, is actually like a, a sombrero. The Spanish had a sombrero. Sorry about the artwork. And when you see that haze, you're looking along the rim of the sombrero. Okay. Now, our sun is just one of the stars in the Milky Way galaxy. This is the center of the galaxy. Don't worry, it's just silly. It's actually a black hole in the middle of it. Okay. In our galaxy, in the Milky Way galaxy, there's about a 10 to the 11th stars. What is 10 to the 11th? Well, 10 to the 9th is a billion. Remember, 10 to the 9th is a billion. 10 to the 11th is 100 times that. So there are approximately 100 billion stars in our galaxy. Our sun is just one of those dots, one star in the Milky Way galaxy, one out of 100 billion stars. Okay. Now, when we take our telescopes, when we go in outer space, we use the Hubble telescope, we can see many other galaxies that are not the Milky Way, not our galaxy. So I drew little sombreros here. It turns out there are approximately 10 to the 11th galaxies in the whole universe. Remember, 10 to the 11th is 100 billion. So there's about 100 billion galaxies in the entire universe. It's a lot of galaxies. So what does that mean? So the Milky Way galaxy, that's us, shaped like a sombrero. There are 10 to the 11 stars in our galaxy, 100 billion. Okay, There are about 10 to the 11 galaxies in the universe. And what this means then is if each galaxy has 10 to the 11 stars and there's 10 to the 11th galaxies, 10 to the 11 times 10 to the 11, remember just add the exponents, 11 plus 11, not multiply, is 10 to the 22nd. So that's less than 10 to the 23rd. So there are less stars in the entire universe than there are in Avogadro's number. I mean, can you believe that? So when we talk about Avogadro's number, or we talk about a mole of atoms or molecules, try to keep in mind how unbelievably, how unfathomable that number is, okay? All right, let's do some racing. Try to stay with me. For everything we're going to do dealing with Avogadro's number, you're going to need a periodic table. Okay? And I'm just going to do this off the top of my head, but that's okay. Pretty easy. I'm going to do some simple examples. Okay? Let's just pick element 12, carbon. Okay? When you see that C on the periodic table, there'll be a 6 and there'll be a 12. 12 is the mass number, the number of nucleons. Right. There are six protons and six neutrons in carbon 12. What makes carbon carbon? Six protons. If you see a 12, that means there's 12 nucleons. So six protons, six neutrons. We just assign. Right. The mass is going to be 10 to the minus 27 or so of a kilogram. It's incredibly small. So we use something called an atomic mass unit. So we'd say carbon has a mass of 12 atomic mass units. And I want you to see something. OK. If I have one mole of carbon 12, okay, it would have a mass of 12 grams. Hmm. Okay. One mole of carbon 12 has a mass of, car of 12 grams. 
Okay. Now let's look at oxygen. If I have one mole of oxygen, remember, if you look on the periodic table, you see the mass of oxygen is 16. This would have a mass of 16 grams. What if I had one mole of O2 molecules? Well, one mole of oxygen, atoms by itself, is 16 grams. So if I have O2, this should be 32 grams. One mole, Avogadro's number. Now watch, see if you can understand this. Suppose I have one mole of H2O. What's the mass of that? Well, if you look on the periodic table, the mass of hydrogen is one. So I have two times one plus, again, periodic table, the mass of oxygen is 16. Two plus 16, 18 grams. So one mole of water would have a mass of 18 grams. Okay, what if I had nine grams of H2O equals how many moles? Well, since 18 grams is one mole, nine grams is a half a mole, 0.5. Suppose I have 36 grams of H2O. Can you see the 36 is twice 18? So this would be two moles. Okay, this is called, the, the chemist called the molecular weight. It's really the molecular mass because it's just a mass. Let's do another example, shall we? Let's do an example. Suppose I take NaOH, sodium hydroxide, very strong base. This is used in uh, cleaning toilets and liquid plumber and things like that. If you look on a periodic table, look at the mass. Suppose I have one mole of this, okay? One mole, sodium, again, on the periodic table, has a 23. Oxygen, 16. Hydrogen, 1. So one mole would have a mass of 16 plus 23 plus 1 should be 40 grams. And that would be called the molecular weight or molecular mass of sodium hydroxide, 40 grams. What if I had 160 grams of NaOH equals how many moles? You see what I'm asking? Well, first you figure out the mass of one mole. We said it was 40 grams. 160 grams is clearly four moles. It's good. What if I had 10 grams? of NaOH equals how many moles? Well, again, one mole is 40 grams. 10 grams, 10 over 40, is a fourth. One fourth of a mole, or 0 0.25 moles. See what we're doing? Can everybody see what we're doing? So if you have a mole, that's where you're going to need the uh, periodic table to tell you what the mass is. Okay? Suppose I had 56. Hmm. Let's see. Let me, I have to think. Okay? Okay. 56 grams of N2, N2 molecule. Okay, well, let's go on a periodic table. Let's look at N. One mole of nitrogen is 14 grams. There's a 14. One mole of N2 is therefore 28 grams, right? You just have two times that. So one mole of N2 is 28 grams. Well, if I have 56 grams, it's clear 56 grams divided by 28 grams per mole. The grams go out. 28 into 56 is two. Moles come up, and I get two moles. 
see, it's not that bad. It's really not that bad. Okay. Let's look at another one. Let's look at sulfuric acid or just sulf sulfuric H hydrogen sulfate H2SO4. So let's look at let's find the mass of one mole. Let's get the molecular mass or molecular weight. Well, hydrogen is one, so I have two times one because I have two hydrogens. It's good. Sulfur. Mm, let's see, without a periodic table, I think it's 32. And oxygen, remember oxygen was 16. So I have to have plus 4 times 16. So what do we get? We get 2 plus 32 plus 4 times 16. What is that? 64, right? 64. So if we add that up, that's 34 plus 68 is 98 grams is the molecular mass of one mole of H2SO4, okay? 49 grams of H2SO4 is clearly a half a mole. One ninety-six grams of H two S O four. This is two times ninety eight. It's just two moles. Okay. Now remember, a mole is six times ten to the twenty third, or Avogadro's number. Okay. So this would be, if you want, two N A. We could write, or point five N A. Okay. Now watch this question. I want you to look. Let's look at H2SO4 just for a second, okay? If I have one molecule of H2SO4, one molecule, one molecule, not Avogadro's number, but one molecule, one molecule has two H atoms, one S atom, and how many oxygen atoms, right? Four, four oxygen atoms, four O atoms. That's one molecule, just one. Suppose I had one mole of NaOH. Okay, what do I have? Well, I'll just use that as Na. Well, I have two times Na H atoms, right? Because there's two of those. I have one times Na S atoms. And I have four times Na O atoms. That's if I have one mole or Na of these guys. Okay? And I'm going to go backwards. I'm going to stop. I'm going to go backwards. I'm going to write this again. But instead of saying one mole of NaOH, I want you to see. Suppose I say I have one dozen NaOH molecules. If I have one dozen, then I have two times 12 equals 24, right? Because a dozen is 12. I have one times 12 equals 12 S atoms. And I have four times 12, which is 48, sorry, O atoms. So instead of dozen, I, sorry, instead of uh, uh, Avogadro's number, Na, we put dozen. You just multiply by 12. If I have mole, you multiply by Na. Okay, so I'm going to go back. Sorry about this. Do, 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 do. I'm going to go back and I'm going to do one mole again. Two times Na H atoms. One times Na S atoms. And four times Na O atoms. Okay, I'm going back. Remember what Na is. Na is Avogadro's number. So this is really, if we want, this is 2 times 6 times 10 to the 23rd. This is just 1 times 6 times 10 to the 23rd. And this is 4 times 6 times 10 to the 23rd, which is 24 
times 10 to the 23rd, right, which is 2.4 times 10 to the 24th oxygen atoms. Okay, so Na is 6 times 10 to the 23rd. I didn't take the 6.02. So 2 times 6.02 is 6, 2 times 6 times 10 to the 23rd, 1 times 6 times 10 to the 23rd, and 4 times 6 times 10 to the 23rd. 4 times 6 times 10 to the 23rd is 24 times 10 to the 23rd. And we usually write it as one number, decimal place, and then the other number. So it's 2.4 times 10 to the 24th. Okay. okay, in the next lecture, I'll do more of these problems and we will practice. Okay, so I hope you have an idea of what we're doing. Remember, Avogadro's number, N sub A, is an unbelievably big number. Okay, if I have quickly one mole of 238 uranium, can you tell me what the mass would be then, right? This is the the uh, nucleon number, so it would be 238 grams. One mole of 235 uranium, remember uranium has 92 protons, that makes it uranium, would be 235 grams, right? These are two isotopes of hydrogen. They differ by three, nit three uh, neutrons. Okay, so one mole, which is Na, which is equal to 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. Okie doke. So we'll do some more problems and we'll practice in the next lecture. So I hope you have a, sort of an idea of moles. Students always have trouble with moles and the concept and understanding and figuring things out, but it really isn't that hard. Okay, we'll do a bunch of problems and uh, we'll see if we can get the answer. But you need to get the molecular mass or the molecular weight of uh, the things, uh, of whatever the compound is. And how do you do that? You use your periodic table. Okie doke. All right. See you next time. Peace. Be safe. Take care.